Michael Lab Solutions, and we're here with Frank today. Frank's going to explain uh, this All Power Labs uh, gasifier. It was their first model, correct? The G E K. Yep. Okay, so hi, Frank. Uh, Hello. Tell a little bit about yourself and the gasifier here. All right. Well, I'm Frank, and I'm from Watteville, and I've uh, been studying gasification for quite a number of years. Worked on it and bought one of these units from All Powers Labs and uh, for experimental work and to learn how it works and uh, basically these are all the parts to it it needs to be assembled and then get to operate it and produce some syn gas out of wood chips cool so we're gonna uh put this thing together and then uh, we'll take some more shots all right thanks frank this is the grate down here where the ash goes down the air goes down through this and the ash goes through this thing here. Um, and there's a clean out on the bottom that you turn this to knock the ash down. And the hole there to clean it out, you open that up and then push the ash through the hole there and it gets filled up. Okay. It takes a long, long time to get filled up. Um, so the air is going down here and it's going around the outside of this chamber here, getting preheated. Uh, preheating the intake air and then the hot gases go out and go out through this hole here the hot syn gases okay That's cool it. this is our invert cone right here it's upside down right now um, the air goes into these pipes right here and uh, the air goes through these pipes here it gets pre-warmed around the jacket that's in here okay so it gets pre-warmed air and then the air goes into these pipes here. And through these jets here. There might be, must be one of these in the car because one's missing. But these are all adjustable jets. So the air is coming out these things here and onto the wood chips. This is all full of wood chips right to this point here. So the air is blasting at the wood chips, getting a good hot fire going. Okay. And below the wood chips, into this invert cone, you fill up with charcoal. So the oxidized uh, CO2 and everything will go into the charcoal and change to carbon monoxide and then go out and around the outside. And cool. So it's basically like a carbon filter. It's, using uh, the charcoal. it's a um, reduction zone. Okay. So it changes CO2 to, to carbon. CO. All right. Okay. So it takes one of the oxygens off. And joins another carbon okay. from the charcoal, and then forms another CO. Then you put in wood chips going up from the, the hopper. Here. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And this cover right here uh -huh. will unscrew from here and go right on top of here. Okay. If you don't want the whole volume of wood chips. Okay. You can have this right here, so you can kind of poke in and see the fire closer and yeah like that. now how long will one last burning uh, several hours this will last several hours okay. this right here is your on and off is your on and off switch actually your off switch okay, okay. you take these out here and this is where your air goes in all right so you start and you got to remember because oftentimes you forget you put these on at the end of a run to shut it off all right. block all the air yeah the next time you start it up you forget to take these off and then you uh, kind of wonder why you can't get any anything to work so right now the air is going in here uh-huh it's going through these hoses here getting preheated from this jacket of hot air okay and then it goes down to the bottom and up through one of these jets all right okay okay and then it's pulled down through the cone here down through all the charcoal after it's burning here, bright fire, hot fire and everything, just so your typical fire. And then all those gases from the fire are going through the charcoal and it's, um, it gets, starts getting cooler down there. So it'll probably get to about 600 degrees centigrade at the bottom of the charcoal from a thousand plus up here mm -hmm. um, as it gets reduced. And then the gases go out there and come up around this jacket here mm -hmm. and go out this pipe here. After okay. you put your charcoal in, uh -huh. fill up your wood chips all the way up here. Okay. Um, the wood chips right here is where you need to start the fire. All right. 
um, and you'll do that by either soaking some in alcohol or getting some wood shaving. There's something that burns readily. Yeah. And then you usually light it through this hole here with a torch. Okay. So that's probably the hardest thing is to get these wood chips burning Initially by blowing started. a torch Initially started. Initially started. All right. And then it's going to smoke a whole lot because the first fumes that are coming out are water vapor. Mm -hmm. And then finally, you'll get smoke coming out, but smoke doesn't burn because it's already burned. So it's not going to flare out of the flare pot until all that smoke and everything gets reduced down here to carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So that means you got to wait till all the wood gets hot, the char get coal gets hot enough here to, t to uh, change that reaction so the stuff coming out here is sim gas. Mm -hmm. It's on top here. See the holes there and everything? Yep. So you have to do those on top. Okay. When you do that, this will be off so you can get at the... Wood chips? Screws. Yep. So you can get at the screws and stuff to put that down. Okay, I see. Yep. Yeah. Unless you just want to... I would start it with... I'd take this top off here and just move it over here and place on here. Okay. To start with. Yeah, just to mess around with it. Yeah, because you got enough wood chips in here and you may have trouble starting it, so you may want to you know, reach in and close down okay. and reach in the fire rather than go through a hole. Through, yeah. 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 All right. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Uh, this hole here is for a thermometer in case so you can check to make sure this doesn't come back out. All right. So the gases um, will come in here and they're going to go up through the filter mm -hmm. and out this pipe right here. Okay. Okay. So, um, it, um, so what happens is a cyclone in here it gets spinning around in this cyclone here and the bigger dust particles and everything and oils and stuff go down. All right. And there's usually a glass jar down here that you can see the oils filling up. Okay. Okay. I put this pipe on here to replace that so the thing is more stable because this attached it to the side of this and gets it pretty tippy. Okay. So I've got another leg here to keep it stable. But you got to remember that this will fill up with the liquid tars and oils. So you've got to kind of clean it out every once in a while. And it's uh, pretty smelly stuff. Okay. What's once every once in a while? Like every couple of days you run every it? Every couple or runs. Or every couple like runs. That. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. This here is usually filled up with things like wood chips and uh, steel wool. All right. And the steel wool gets out the sulfur and stuff for running engines. Okay. Okay. There's usually not much sulfur in wood, but... That's what it is. So you just fill that up inside? That's steel yeah, wool that's in there? that's steel wool right there. You wouldn't want to leave the plastic on, would you? No. Yeah, no, I just say. have a bag of new wool. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. And this is where you need a cover. This is where another fan used to be to blow it out here, but it was never quite strong enough and it kept breaking, so um, I used a, another source of fan, the vacuum cleaner. Blower, okay. Now, if it had the glass jar on the bottom, would it just be open, basically, or yeah, it would be, be able to blow? No, it, it has to be sealed up. It does? So when you get your glass jar, you have to seal it Seal it to the bottom here, because you don't want any air going Cut. out there, it's gonna, or sucking in there, actually, because it's being pulled out this way. Okay. So you don't want any air air getting into the gas mixture from here out because this will not explode or flame or anything because it doesn't have any oxygen. Okay. Okay. But if you start getting air leaks in here, you can have the thing backfire. Backdraft. All right. Okay. Yeah, these yeah. meters are gauges that were never used. Both of them were, um, they quickly changed all these to a different type of gauge after I bought this, you know, they've been keep on continuing developing the system. Yeah. But this here is to tell you if the filter's blocked up, vacuum pressure. Okay. This one here down here is tell you, telling you if the wood is blocked up. It kind of gives you an idea if there are problems or not. All right. Okay. So oh, they're just putting a vacuum on it. They changed this one here to be a U-tube. All right. Full of water. Yeah, and you can get pressure through the water level. Yes. Okay. That's how, that's how they change that right after this. All right. So either you can replace these gauge to something more sensitive, something more accurate, or you can put a water loop on there. All right. Okay. Yeah. And this one here, I'd probably take it out and put a plug in there. So 15 for, feet of what kind of tubing? Uh, like? Rubber tubing, uh, real stiff rubber tubing that's not going to collapse, that has a one inch. ID diameter. Yeah. Fits on here with a hose clamp. All right. 
and goes down to your vacuum cleaner, okay? Then it goes, attaches to your vacuum cleaner. You're gonna go out of your vacuum cleaner for the five foot tube to go into here, okay? And then this here goes into the flame pot. Okay, and it'll, so you'll be shooting hot gases through here into here. All right. And when you're starting this, this is going to smoke like hell. You're going to keep lighting it with a torch, and it's not going to light. And you keep lighting it and waiting and waiting. And what you're waiting for is this hot char in here to get hot enough to change the chemical so that it's something that will burn a second time because it's already burned up here. Okay, the regular fire. Now you're taking all of those already burned uh, chemicals, the CO2 and water and stuff, and you're putting it through the char to get it to change to carbon monoxide and hydrogen. And then those gases will go through here. And finally, when that gets hot enough to do that, then when you light this, it will flame. Huh. A very clean, bluish, hydrogen Bloof. CO flame. Yes, okay. okay. You can barely see it in the daytime. If you have nighttime, you can see a nice blue color. All right. And this will get cherry red eventually. Yeah. Interesting. Now, why do, don't do they just flame it straight off of there? Why do they use a, a long pipe? Is that to cool um, the gases? or? Uh, it will cool it before it gets to the vacuum cleaner. Okay. Uh, the pump stuff. Plus, you can truck this gas across the street. Yeah. Okay. You can... I mean, this gas is burnable gas. You can pipe this to a car engine. Okay. Or any type of gas. Engine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is just, it doesn't have to be hot or anything. You could flame it right here too, but you'd need to mix air with it at the right ratio. Yeah. Which that uh, pot there will do that. It's designed to get it swirling in here. Okay. And mixing air. Yeah. Um, now, what about running that onto, like, say, a, a burner to boil water or yeah, a... Put a pot over that thing and boil water. You got a flame. You know, oh. you got a very hot fire going there. Beautiful. And that's just your flame off. That's not actually the product that you're going to be using, correct? This is the product that you're okay. using. This is directly the product that you could pipe into an engine. All right. And the carburetor is usually you split, you take off the gas line mm -hmm. and you put it 50-50 um, in the air intake, you mix it 50-50 with air and this gas, mm -hmm. it's about the right ratio. Um, and then you don't need your vacuum cleaner anymore. You don't need the fan anymore. Because when you say push down the gas pedal to get more, you want more energy in your uh, engine there, then this is gonna put more vacuum and pull more gases through here. Yeah. So that's okay. how it runs. Yeah. So once you get it started, you've got that flame going, then do you disconnect and hook it up to your gen set or then, to your motor? Um, then your, that's your job. I haven't got that far yet. Okay. okay. <laughs> but I think what I would do is get it running really good because you don't want to put the crap through your engine because otherwise you'll be tearing out the rings and cleaning it up. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so what I would probably do is get this running really well, put a T before the vacuum cleaner. Uh, okay. And then directly pipe it into the engine and maybe get the engine running with a little bit of squirt of gas or something. Yeah, some carb starter or yeah, something. That's right. Get it running and then have it directly go into there. Uh-huh. And then turn this thing, that will turn this right on. Okay. And, yeah, and you've diverted your gas into your motor. Okay. Interesting. And this will take like a 20 horsepower engine and the one that you have there is 3 horsepower. Yeah. So I'm not sure how well that would work. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. That's awesome. We're going to have a lot of fun experimenting with this and getting it all set up and uh, testing it out. So thanks again, Frank, uh, for showing us uh, this uh, how to use this gasifier.